Well, good morning, everyone. It's uh, Friday morning. I hope that you've had a good week. Um, like I stated earlier in the week on my stories on Instagram today, I'm putting together kind of a um, cumulative video on the um, lichenoid vulvar dermatoses. So that's lichen simplex at chronicus, lichen sclerosis, and lichen planus, specifically more erosive lichen planus. Um, you know, each of those videos that I did on Instagram kind of touched on things a little bit. So I'm going to kind of go a little bit deeper today since this is going to be kind of on YouTube and you can, you know, peruse it at your leisure, if you will. Um, so to start off with, vulvar dermatoses are kind of a collection of skin disorders that occur on the vulva. Now, most of these do not have any actual vaginal involvement, like in plainness definitely can, but for the majority of them, they are simply kind of on the outside, kind of around the labia, um, along the clitoris, and down on the perineum too. Some of them can have some perianal involvement, um, and then obviously a lot of these things can also have extra genital involvement too. You can get lichen planus in the mouth. You can get lichen sclerosis on the skin. You can get lichen simplex, um, which is kind of like a form of eczema pretty much anywhere. Um, so, you know, patients who already have pre-existing skin issues or kind of are maybe more predisposed to that, secondary to autoimmunity issues, genetics, whatever it may be, um, can definitely see an increase in these type of symptoms. Now, we also do know that a lot of the time these uh, kind of occur in, in more extremes of the um, age groups. So in either, um, you know, women who have yet to go through puberty or postmenopausal women. And that's especially true for lichen sclerosis. Um, whether it's due to kind of low estrogen states or, you know, a variety of other things, you know, that's kind of to be debated. But we know that like that, those kind of age groupings tend to have the highest concentration of these patients. Now, I I any person at any time can develop any of these conditions and they affect men and women, you know, you know, both obviously. Um, but the, the big thing with them is, uh, you know, accurate diagnosis and then accurate treatment in order to help improve quality of life. Now, you've heard me talk about before vulvar biopsy. I'm going to say it again, vulvar biopsy. Oh, guess what? It's vulvar biopsy. Hey, biopsy, 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 biopsy. You cannot, even if you do this all day long, look at something and definitively say that that is lichen sclerosis versus pre what's called vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia or kind of precancerous changes. You may be able to say, I think that's lichen simplex versus like lichen planus, but really you need that biopsy for actual confirmation. So if you are uh, suffering from any of these conditions and you go to a provider and they just throw medication at you without actually biopsying it, Talk to someone else. Go get a second opinion. Don't start that. So anyway, um, kind of starting off like in simplex, um, neurodermatitis, another kind of term for it, basically can be considered a, a basically a eczematous type reaction on, on the, the vulva. Um, typically, uh, and this kind of goes through the majority of the lichenoid disorders, you see kind of a thickening of the skin. Think about kind of lichen on a tree, kind of with like lichen or mold or things like that, you know. Um, and the skin can get a little bit hypertrophied. Um, there can be some what's called hyperkeratosis or kind of ridging kind of on it. Um, but typically the, this skin is very, very itchy. And this is the initial hallmark of almost all of these conditions is itching. And especially itching if it wakes you up in the middle of the night, that's something that's never normal. Um, now, lichen simplex, um, like I said, you know, we, we see this in correlation with patients that already have eczema. They may have asthma or other kind of autoimmune type, um, you know, allergic responses, if you you will. Um, treatment for lichen simplex uh, typically is either trying to break the kind of itch scratch cycle um, or um, and kind of a mixture of both um, doing kind of steroids. Now you don't have to use the ultra potent steroids for lichen simplex. You know I'll often do uh, triamcinolone or kinolog um, and kind of a you know preparation for that. Um, whereas with the other ones we typically go straight to clobetazole which is a, a, a higher potency steroid. Um, with lichen simplex, like I said, the itch scratch cycle is very important, you know, to break. Now, itching is its whole thing, but basically, you know, when you, when you itch something, you create a little bit of tissue trauma, um, on that skin. And what happens with the body then is the body says, oh, there's trauma here. We need to kind of flood the area with, uh, chemicals and, and hormones that help with wound healing. And, and some of those chemicals that kind of come to the area are histamine. Um, and histamine, as we know, uh, promotes itching. You know, you think about antihistamines. 
Um, and so the histamine gets into the skin there. It causes it to kind of the capillaries, little blood vessels to dilate a little bit there. So there's more at the surface um, and your body responds to that as kind of an, an itch. And when we have an itch, we want to scratch it. It's kind of human nature. So it kind of gets going in this vicious cycle. Um, obviously, if you scratch things too much, they can get infected, especially if you know you introduce bacteria from under your nails or things like that. So for that reason, we'll sometimes have patients wear mittens or gloves to bed, um, especially if they're really having a difficult time with nocturnal itching um, to hopes of, of breaking that. Obviously, doing environmental things like changing soaps, changing uh, you know um, detergent, stuff like that can be very beneficial too for these patients. And then really trying to find out if there are any type of dietary triggers that really kind of promote that type of inflammation or itching. You know, if you're a patient that already has some dietary things, um, you know that may you may notice a correlation there. Um, if you don't, you know we talk about high oxalate diets a lot with the lichenoid skin disorders. So that's something to look into and potentially kind of you know evaluate your diet based on that um, you can give medications to help with itching stuff like visteril um, which hydroxazine uh, regular old benadryl uh, there's a bunch of different ones you can do and there's a whole different protocols there so like I said, the, the treatment mainly is um, a steroid, though, to calm down the itching and to help with kind of skin recuperation there. And if you have a patient who has kind of one of those low estrogen states, you may want to consider doing some sort of estrogen supplementation as well. So lichen simplex, unlike the other lichenoid uh, vulvar disorders, does not really have a, a chance or a propensity to change into any type of skin cancer. So it's kind of the most benign of all of them, if you will. So moving on, um, lichen sclerosis is kind of the one that most people know of, um, and it gets, tends to get the most kind of media attention, if you will. Um, now, lichen sclerosis typically presents as kind of white patches on the vulva. Um, it kind of a typical hourglass pattern, if you will, kind of around the vagina uh, and vulva there, and then on the perineum, and then around the anus too. Um, these patches will often have kind of a glassy appearance. And if the skin is already a little bit thin, you may notice it's kind of the, uh, you know, buzzword is cigarette paper appearance that we'd see, you know, if, if imagine kind of rolling your own cigarettes or something and the paper is kind of thin and it looks like little pieces of paper kind of folded together there. Um, now, the big thing with lichen sclerosis, you can have ulcerations where the tissue actually breaks down and these areas can get infected and that can cause problems. And just like I said before with some of my other videos, you know, the more tissue changes going on, the more cellular turnover is going on, the higher the likelihood for a, um, you know, dysplastic or kind of precancerous change. And so that's why we see this potential for, you know, skin cancer in patients that have lichen sclerosis. Um, in postmenopausal patients, it's roughly a 5 to 10 percent um, likelihood will develop uh, skin cancer or squamous cell carcinoma if they aren't adequately treated. Um, once again, biopsy is the diagnosis of choice. Um, really the only way to actually biopsy things. Um, and we do punch biopsies all the time in the office. I do a good number of them like uh, every week. They're not difficult to do. Um, you know, they're little two to three millimeter things. So if you're a provider and you don't know how to do one, let me know. I'll, I'll show you. It's not difficult. Um, Treatment for lichen sclerosis, um, or well, let me get first to other symptoms besides itching um, that lichen sclerosis often causes is pain. Um, now, this can be pain with um, any type of sexual penetration. It can be pain with uh, in non-sexual penetration, putting a tampon in, things like that. Some women will report substantial vaginal dryness, um, and so they'll feel kind of their labia actually kind of rubbing together, which is a very disconcerting sensation. Um, and especially if the lichen sclerosis involves the clitoris, then it can, you know, you can have sexual pain even without penetration, with any type of clitoral engorgement, with arousal. Um, it can kind of get trapped underneath a more scarred or sclerotic um, clitoral hood, and that can be really uncomfortable. Um, so, like I said, itching, pain, um, those are kind of the main things we see with lichen sclerosis. Um, it, as a general rule, does not cause obliteration of the actual like reproductive tract, which is something we can see in lichen planus. Um, so that's another kind of thing, the way to kind of differentiate the two. Um, treatment is going to be a high potency steroid such as clobetazole. That's kind of the gold standard for lichen sclerosis. Um, there have been other kind of things that have been tried. Um, you know, uh, people talk about uh, platelet-rich plasma or PRP. Uh, there's some of the phototherapy things or energy-based devices like Mona Lisa Touch or 
um, Fimvi or some of those things. Um, people have even used other medications too, lower potency steroid stuff. It just doesn't have the same benefit. The only thing that really has been shown to maybe come close is what are called calcineurin inhibitors like tacrolimus, picrolimus. Those are medications that are also used for medication or uh, for diseases such as uh, eczema and things like that. But still, they don't really have the same uh, prevention of skin cancer benefit that you see with the steroids. So that should be considered kind of like a second line therapy. Um, in um, patients who have low estrogen states, um, you want to consider adding a topical estradiol as well to these um, to kind of help with the tissue rejuvenation, help it kind of plump up quicker. Um, but really the big, you know, the big important thing there is that steroid. Um, Lichen sclerosis uh, unfortunately gets misdiagnosed all the time. Um, well, actually, a lot of these do as yeast infections or um, as you know bacterial vaginosis. I saw a patient earlier this week that had been to multiple providers, multiple rounds of antibiotics. Um, you know, basically, and then kind of just told it's all in your head. And you know, we do her exam, and she's got these just white patches everywhere. And it's like, what the heck? You know, this is not normal. Your your vulva should not have white glassy patches on it like that is not a normal thing it's not so if you see that go get that checked out if you're a provider and you see that biopsy it or find someone who will biopsy it um so you know but like i said obviously and you know with diagnosing these um you know what to do. Like I said, it's not hard. Um, it's just a matter of kind of finding the right regimen for that patient. Now, a lot of people talk with ultra potent steroids about tissue breakdown and ulceration and stuff like that. And yes, that is a possibility. Um, I personally have never seen that. Um, I, you know, obviously I'm sure there are people that have, but um, <clears throat> really like it, it's just, it is so much more beneficial to have the steroid therapy like the benefit far, far, far outweighs the risk for tissue breakdown from prolonged ster steroid use. So just throwing that out there. The last of the, the big three uh, lichenoid um, vulvar dermatoses is lichen planus. Now lichen planus has kind of two main subtypes. There's general old lichen planus and then there's ulcerative or erosive, excuse me, lichen planus. Uh, the big thing with lichen planus, we often um, see it in the mouth as well as kind of like white lattice patches um, you know, in the mouth, um, on the gums, on the tongue. So a lot of times dentists will see this. Um, and you know, uh, you may get a referral from a dentist sometimes saying, Hey, I saw this stuff and I'm, you know, worried because it affects mucosal membranes. Um, and this patient's complaining of vulvar itching as well. And, you know, um, uh, that's, I, I, that's out of my wheelhouse, you know? So there's a, a joke there where you could do with dentists and gynecologists about cavities, but I'm not going to do that. So, um, Lichen planus um, on the skin typically presents as these kind of flat patches, almost kind of like annular or coin-like lesions. They can be kind of reddishy purple. Um, but on the vulva, uh, we typically see, once again, that kind of glassy white type of change there. Now, the main difference between lichen planus and lichen sclerosis is that lichen planus, especially ulcerative lichen planus, will cause a literal stenosis or narrowing of the vaginal canal. You can actually have kind of more vaginal involvement of it and you can get it to where like you can't insert a Q-tip into the vagina because it has so narrowed down. Um, so once again, you know, accurate diagnosis is imperative for these women so they don't lose the ability to have any type of penetrative, you know, sexual activity. Um, the other thing we can see with it, once again, you can have that progression to skin cancer because it's causing that more kind of rapid cellular turnover. So, you know, look at that. Um, therapy for lichen planus, you know, in addition to steroids and estradiol, a lot of times we're going to be doing dilator therapy too, especially if there has been any type of um, stenosis or narrowing of the vaginal canal itself um, to try and help kind of, you know, open things back up. Lichen planus, I've had patients come in that told they had, were positive for herpes and they were put on antivirals and it didn't do anything. They said, wow, this got to be a really bad strand of herpes. And it's like, that that's not that's not herpes, people like it. It looks very, very different. So, you know, especially the ulcerative type, you see kind of ulcers, skin tissue breakdown in the area, um, you know, red kind of ulcerative spots and, and erosions actually of the, the tissue itself. Um, you know, it's kind of a hallmark sign there. Um, so, you know, once again, like it, it's something that is kind of more, the, the big difference between lichen sclerosis, which pretty much just stays on the vulva, lichen planus can involve kind of vaginal tissue as well. Um, both of them can cause ulcerations, tissue breakdown, but that lichen planus typically causes that narrowing. 
Hallmark kind of initial symptoms, once again, itching. That's kind of the big thing. So if you see itching, if you feel itching, patient comes in saying, I'm having all this itching, it behooves you to investigate this in, in full detail. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this kind of, you know, talk on the lichenoid vulvar dermatoses. If you have, please let me know, like this video, comment, you know, share it with your friends, whatever it may be. Otherwise, I'm Dr. Corey Babb. I hope you have a great weekend and take charge of your own health.